it's not. The lights oh, do yeah. help. You're yes. just saying that the air conditioning is So cold backstage. <laughs> yeah. So how's things? You have been in Ireland for a couple of days now, and you've been having a little tour around. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah. Um, this this is my fr has been my first time in Ireland, so it's it's been so much fun to um, to go around and check out the sites and everything. All the stuff that I've seen so many pictures about and everything is really, really cool. Because you were yeah. saying to me before, uh, because we had a little chat before the show kicked off, we had a call last week, and you were saying that Ireland has always been like top of your list, so I was dying to find out how you were getting on, so I was like, just that's a lot of pressure, like when Ireland is like top of someone's list, like has it lived up to expectations so far? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it's always so interesting whenever I go to a you know a new country or something that we mentioned there, like what the people are going to be like because you know you just never really know because everywhere has like a different culture. So, uh, but so far Ireland has been you guys have been incredible. I've loved meeting all of you guys. It's been it's been really really awesome. Because uh, I saw that you did actually you went to the cliffs of Moher on one of the windiest days that we've had in recent weeks. I thought I was going to like get blown off a cliff, man. That was it was bad. But you did that drive there. And back in the one day, like yeah, I, yeah. I, do I speak for all Irish people here when I say we wouldn't do that in the one day? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, very, very quietly agreeing with me. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> but you also got to see some Irish dancing when you went for for dinner the other night, and then as I was actually doing uh, research, I learned that you're a bit of a dancer yourself, or at least you were when you were very like, young. Hey. Yeah, I, did, I, did, I took tap dancing when I was like eight years old. I, I still remember a couple of things, and no, I will not perform them on stage right now. Yeah, you saw where I was going with that one. Yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to, to take tap? Um, actually, uh, wow, I, haven't even, I don't think I've ever told this story. Uh, when I was like uh, seven or eight, I was doing one of my first like acting gigs ever. It was in the Wizard of Oz in like the main theater in Atlanta, Georgia, because that's where I'm from. And uh, the I just I loved like I, I was like a munchkin in the show and like an Aussie in because I was like this tall. And the uh, the guy that played the Tin Man, he had the whole this whole like tap dancing like uh, you know bit, and I just thought it was so cool. I thought like. You know, this dude in all this metal gear doing tap dancing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I just I wanted to do it. Did it for a couple of years. And uh, and then I actually I booked the, uh, the Walking Dead. So I couldn't really go to, you know, weekly classes as much anymore. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and you started acting from such a young age. What, what got you started in the industry? Um, well, I started doing it professionally around the same time that I was doing theater stuff. Uh, around when I was like eight or nine, and honestly, it was just random auditions. I had uh, I had gotten an agent from when I was like six or seven, and just doing like commercials and really like small parts in movies, things like that. But then um, you know, just audition after audition, and kind of one thing led to another, and I just got really lucky with The Walking Dead. <laughs> Yeah, because I know, like, with some uh, child actors, when they look back on some of the ads that they were cast in, like, I know Mila Kunis is one that she was always just like, oh, whenever I see that come up, it always, like, mortifies me. Is there anything that you, that you're kind of like, I hope that stays hidden forever, that we're totally not going to Google afterwards? <laughs> there's a bunch of movies, not a bunch, but there's a couple of movies that I did when I was, um, like, 14, and... Yeah, they're not good. I get people actually come up, coming up to me at conventions and they're like, Hey, I loved you in, in that movie that I will not name, so none of you have to suffer through it. And, uh, and I'm like, really? You enjoyed that? Thank, well, I mean, props to you for sitting, sitting through that movie, because I did not think it was very good. But, um, yeah, there's a, I have a handful of movies like that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all about you know, the experience of getting to be on set and getting to do something really cool. And, you know, it's always a great time. And what were those auditioning processes like when you were so young? Because I remember chatting to Mara Wilson and she was saying that, like, as she got older, it, it got more difficult because people were still expecting her to still be, like, the young child. So did you experience anything similar to that? Well, it, it was interesting for me, you know, while I was on The Walking Dead, I really wasn't worried about doing any other projects at the time outside the walking dead because i was also in school at the same time like i went to normal public high school and so i was kind of tied up and i was taking all these 
It's crazy hard classes, so I was going to get college credit, but I didn't even end up going to college anyway, so it was a whole, anyways. Um, but, yeah, so I didn't really branch out and do a lot of auditions while I wasn't filming during the off-season. So when my character was, spoiler alert, when my character was killed off of The Walking Dead, I kind of, I had to move, I had moved out to LA and was just kind of thrown into the deep end and it's, um, you know, when you're, when you're 18, there's a lot more actors, you know, that are really good at what they do than when you're 10 years old. So I had, I suddenly had like a huge wave of competition and I was like, okay, I should like start taking some classes and like actually, you know, pick up some slack here and, uh, and you know, get better. So yeah, there was that kind of moment of realization of like, oh, this is um, like, it's a competition now. Like I really gotta, I really gotta, gotta push for all these auditions and really put my heart and soul into all. Perfect. And with The Walking Dead, I know you're a massive fan of the comics. So when you actually got the, the casting call to play Carl, were you already familiar with the comics at that point, or was it only after you got cast that you, you liked the comics? Yeah, yeah. But, well, it was um, when I got the audition, that's when I went and picked up the comics because, um, I mean, it, it, it seemed like the right idea if it's based off, if any time I get an audition that's based off of something else, I'm always going to look at the source material to kind of see the vibe if it's, you know, what, what they're kind of looking for. And, uh, but like instantly I was hooked onto the comics and just read all of them all the way through. And I remember actually in season one, it was like episode three or four that we were filming and the comic issue came out. Remember it was issue 75 and it was the one, um, it was, it was one of the ones where they were in Alexandria, but it was awesome because in the back of that issue was the first, it was like their announcement for like, that it was going to be a TV show, and then they were, they were, they put the, uh, you know, uh, the pictures for all of us, like, cast as the characters, so they put, you know, um, the picture that they took of myself as Carl and everything, and all the other characters, and I saw that, and I was, like, freaking out, I was like, I'm in a comic book, this is so cool! I went around and had all the other, like, cast members on set go and autograph all the different pages, because it was just, it was the coolest thing for me. It was really, really cool. Wow, and that is now safe in a safety deposit box somewhere. <laughs> I have no idea where it is. <laughs> so, it's very unfortunate, yeah. Well, that's a oops. <laughs> and so, you're 10 years old, you're cast on this mega production, and you're introduced to the man who's going to play your father, Andrew Lincoln. And he is not a, a native uh, Atlantean, he is actually a British actor who I absolutely loved in the series Teachers. And then of course he was in uh, Love Actually as well. So what was it like meeting him for the first time and then sort of like just like getting to know each other? You know, it was, um, it was, it was just so cool meeting, meeting everyone and getting to like be on something that I thought was so cool because I know I like I just thought that my character Carl ended up being so cool down the line like you know a ten year old like being on a show it's like it was just the coolest thing ever for me at the time um, but the thing the thing about it was that it wasn't really like this huge crazy thing because AMC the uh, the network that produces it in in America and distributes it. Um, wasn't like super well known. So they have other shows like Breaking Bad, and uh, they had some other like you know, pretty decent shows. But they never like Breaking Bad didn't really get big until like later like later seasons. And so AMC wasn't a huge network. And The Walking Dead, we weren't given a huge budget. It wasn't really a huge show. Like it was a long, a lot of really long hot days. And um, yeah, it was just. It was a lot of work, but yeah, I just remember those first like few days of meeting everyone was just was so so awesome. I loved it. Yeah, because I think The Walking Dead was one of the earlier ones because I know like you had like Arrow and The Flash and things like that from like DC Comics, but I think for like The Walking Dead, like that was eleven seasons ago. Like it's going to be finishing up with eleven part B very shortly, and it's like that was one of the first sort of major um, TV adaptations that we'd had in a long time. So it kind of was setting the bar, I suppose. Yeah, well not only that, but no one cared about zombies at the time. The big thing, you know, if you think back to like 2009, 2010, it was, uh, it was Twilight and vampires, you know, the vampire diaries. 
and all those all those uh, vampire shows. No one really cared about the zombies. So when uh, I remember <laughs> my dad when we got the audition, he was like, "A zombie TV show? No one is gonna watch this. Like this is it's not gonna end well." And at the end of season one, you know, we all this the after the last shot and we wrapped. Everyone, you know, was uh, everyone was just crying because we we're like, well, we're never gonna see each other again. You know, we're probably not gonna get picked up for another season, but you know, it was a it was a good run of, of a good six episodes, and uh, you know, here we are, like <laughs> ten years later. Yeah. yeah. And for such a young kid, like, what was it like for you seeing the extras who had been cast as as the zombies? Because now, I don't know how many other people feel the same way, but zombies actually they just creep me out. I don't know what it is, but I always have, like admired the craft, especially in the show like The Walking Dead. So for someone so young to see come to life, pardon the pun, uh, zombies, like what was that like for you? So, so cool. I mean, well for the zombies it's like, you know, they're... You talk to them, they're like normal people, you know, when they say cut, I mean, it's like at these, at these conventions, you know, when you see someone in like a scary costume, it's not really scary because they're just like walking, there's a normal person just walking around, and like, whoa, that's cool. That's pretty much how it is, the same kind of thing. So, you know, when they say cut, it's like they'll go and smoke a cigarette or like go eat like a stick of beef jerky or something, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, um, it's not... It's not freaky, you know, it's our jobs to make it look scary, so the fact that you're under that impression means I did my job. I, I'm also just a very big scary cat. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> All right. Sorry, no shit. <laughs> and so Carl, he had quite a very interesting story arc because from my perspective, I always saw Carl as being the one that was still kind of clinging on to the fact that humanity was still good and that there were still good in people, even though under these circumstances, you know, there was a lot of people who were sort of turning maybe to, like, so we say, the dark side and things like that. So with the overall story arc for Carl, were, were you happy with it? Or were there parts of it where you're kind of like, eh, that's not the way they did it in the comics? It's, it's um, a little bit of both, to be honest, but I, I think that all of the kind of adaptations that they've done from the comics to the television have um, I've been pretty well executed, you know, and the things that they've changed. I mean, you look at Daryl, wasn't in the comics at all, but has come to be like the, the poster boy of the, of the show. Is like, you know, the iconic character for the show that a lot of people think about when they think about The Walking Dead. Uh, so there's a lot of things that they, um, that they do right uh, in, in the show that the comics didn't do. And yeah, I mean, there's, there are some that I think the comics did better, some that the show did better, but I feel it kind of balances out pretty well. And because there's always, well, especially like in the later seasons, everyone was kind of split up. So there was a lot of different storylines going on. For your days, were you actually given the whole script or were you only given like your, your scenes as such? So were you aware of like what was going on elsewhere or just what you were involved in? Yeah, when when you work on a on a on a show or a movie and you're like a series, in your series regular on a show, they'll give you every script. So I I knew what was going on, you know, um, probably about a few weeks ahead in advance. But um, I wouldn't. Uh, we, we would, and then also the producers would kind of tell us like, hey, just so you know, um, this character is. Gonna not, you know, is gonna get killed off in episode eight. We'd be on like episode one, you know. So they'd give us a, a pretty decent heads up, usually, most of the time. I'd say one of the only times that I've heard, now this may not may or may not be true, that they did try and keep it as tight lipped was, of course, when Megan takes out Glenn and Abraham. So were you as surprised at that as we were, or did you, did you know? I, I didn't know. No, there was, um, there was supposedly. Okay, so apparently everyone else knew but me because I've seen like some of the, a couple of the other actors being like, oh, you know, the, the other actors saying that they, they didn't know, oh, that's a, that's a bunch of BS, they all knew. I didn't know, no one told me. So I was like, I was sitting there and I was like, I, I had a pretty good, I, I was like, okay, they would have told me if it was me. So I'm, I'm clear, they're not gonna kill Rick. Probably not, you know, you, I was like going down the list trying to like figure out who exactly it was going to be, because it was Glenn in the comics. I was like, well, it's probably going to be Glenn in the show, but I don't really know. Um, but I really didn't know until we actually, until I got the script, and I, and I found out who it was. And the thing was, was that that episode, we actually shot 
three different versions of that episode because we had someone on the inside was leaking a whole bunch of like, you know, they would any time a big character death was coming, they would leak it like months in advance. So we filmed three different versions of that scene with three different, er, uh, yeah, three different characters getting killed instead of Abraham and Glenn to try and like throw off the leaks, which added like another week to our production where I'm having to, having to sit on my knees and gravel and cry for hours and hours. Yeah, it was not fun. So, can I ask who were the other ones that you filmed? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. One of them um, was Maggie and Eugene, and then the other one was, I think, Aaron and Eugene. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. it, and so it was always going to be two. There was never just going to be the one. So, because it is only one in the comics, as you were saying. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, from, again, from a comic lover's point of view, were you surprised that it was Glenn in the end? Because he had literally just come back into the show as well, only to just be booted. Yeah, I know. I, I, I personally wasn't surprised because it happened in the comics, you know, so I kind of anticipated that it was coming. But, I mean, it, at, at the end of the day, it always sucks when whenever a, a member of the cat has to leave the show. It's um, never fun having to do those those death dinners and whatnot, but um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. You just met, touched on something there, like the death dinners. I always thought that that was such a lovely way for you all to kind of like honor each other because you've been because like filming The Walking Dead, it is quite a, a tough shoot as well, especially for the physical demands um, on all of you as actors. So, like, I'm assuming you got a, a death dinner as well. Yeah, it's you know it's funny how like popularized like this this whole thing is. In season one, it started it started out as just um, you know one of the characters we get killed off, and so they would uh, all the other cast members would like take him out to their favorite restaurant. But kind of as the seasons progressed and more and more people started watching The Walking Dead, we started to not be able to do this anymore because we couldn't be like, all right, you know, it sucks that you're dying, uh, Herschel, you know, but it's like we can't do that in like a public place because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it does not work. So we had to kind of bring it apart, like privately and then, um, but yeah, I did have a I did have a death dinner and everyone was there and it was just it was it's like weird like it's 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 really nice and cool but like man when you're sitting there and it's like it feels like you're being sent off to your death it's like <laughs> what is happening like they're all talking like you're like they're never gonna see you again it's like you did so good I'm like thanks <laughs> I'm gonna see you like tomorrow <laughs> you know um, but yeah it was uh, it was it was good yeah. and I think. Carl's exit storyline really, I don't want to say enraged people, because it was actually done in quite a, a good way in the end, but because it wasn't the way that it had been in the comics, a lot of people were kind of like, what do you mean he's going to kill up? So, like, again, from your point of view, not only as a fan of the comics, but also playing the role, was it a surprise when, when they took you aside to sort of say, look, this is the reaction we're going in? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I had just uh, signed on for a few more years, and I had bought a house down near the set, and um, and then I we, we kind of like sat down and figured out, or I'd, I'd been told kind of that you know what Carl's story was going to be like for the season, um, even like towards the end of season eight, what his story was going to be like. But then a couple months later, I got the got the phone call. I'm like, well. This is unfortunate. <laughs> so, um, and ended up just kind of having to, to switch gears and you know figure some other stuff out and uh, move out to LA to further pursue acting. So, yeah. Did you like the storyline that they created to kind of write you out? Yeah, I mean, when I, when I first <laughs> when I was first told about it, it was <laughs> I was told that he was gonna like crawl down to a sewer and die there. I'm like, man, that is the lamest death for Carl. I'm like, this dude has like been through some serious stuff. Like, um, but then when uh, I read the script, I'm like, oh, actually, he's like saving all of Alexandria, and there's an explosion. I, I, I was like, I really, I've been saying for years, I was like, if Carl dies, I want there to be gunfire and explosions, and I got gunfire and explosions, so I'm happy. And with, we were talking before about the eye patch, and for me, my initial impression would have been like that you would have been like tripping over like 
trees or falling down steps and then you pointed out that it's actually because you can't, physically can't see things and in the middle of a scene you could have like a bee or something like flying at you. But also I suppose because you'd have it on for 10 hours a day, that must be disorientating when you take it off. So like, did you Absolutely. find that your eyes were just like not working properly? It is the weirdest thing. Is there anyone in here that's dressed up as Carl that has the eye patch? Right here, okay, yeah. We got one. We, there's a, a couple of people that I that I saw here today with with the uh, with the eye patch at the convention. Yeah, it sucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah, you can't see anything. Yeah, and and uh, it's it's just the 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 fear and adrenaline that runs through your body when you're sitting there in a scene and you're in character and you have to be all serious. You know, you're talking to the other character and all of a sudden you hear a bee come in from the other side, like, just whizzing by your ear, and you're like, oh god, I hope it's, it didn't just land on me, because I can't see where it went at all. And you see the other actor, like, dart their eyes, like, to the side, like, trying not, to, like, trying to play it all cool, and it's like, it's just, it is terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. So, you moved to LA to pursue more acting, um, but you've also pursued another career. You started producing music as well. Yeah, well actually, I'd been producing music um, when, when I was still on the show. I just hadn't you know, been putting any of it out or anything like that. But yeah, I, um, I had a couple of years after we moved out to LA of, um, of touring and playing shows and, and whatnot. It kind of died down since COVID and whatnot, but um, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun hobby to do on the side. And what would be, say, like some of your gear music, musical inspirations for it? I produce um, mainly EDM, so, um, but like more, um, uh, oh, what's the word? There's a, that's a cinematic, that's kind of like cinematic EDM, that's kind of how I classify the music that I make, because I take inspiration from people like Hans Zimmer, but also people like Flume, or um, like, Anyone, uh, uh, Porter Robinson, anyone that knows electronic music. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun, kind of exploring another like kind of creative outlet. And the the dream is to eventually like write, direct, produce, score my own uh, my own film. And you actually touched on something there as well with uh, directing. Like I mean, we know a lot of the the former Walking Dead cast members have been able to come back and direct, and there are quite a few spin-offs now as well. So if the call came to be just like, hey, do you want to chance your arm and try this? Like, would you be up for it? Absolutely. Yeah. I um I actually I got to shadow one of the uh, directors for uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Who is he's doing another one right now, but. Um, I've known him like since forever. He actually he directed his first episode of television that he directed was uh, the Grove, the episode with um, the Look at the Flowers one. That episode was the first episode that he'd ever directed. So I was like, this is the perfect guy to shadow because he knows what he's doing, and uh, I got to see kind of like behind the scenes stuff of, uh, of how it was going. So I was actually I was trying to get a, a TV show that I had written of my own off the ground, but um, but yeah, if if uh, that opportunity ever came up. Absolutely, take it up. Fantastic. And what are you working on at the moment, or are you allowed to say? Um, I don't really want to say anything yet because it's it's like so early in the process, and like it's um, it's all there. It's just you know it's not not written quite yet. Awesome. So what you're saying is stay tuned. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Well, on that note, we can open it up to the floor. So for those of you who haven't been in for the Q and A's yet, we've got two. Oh, well, there's someone ready and waiting. I love it. Look at there's that. There's two microphones on either side here. You guys are just like rushing to leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see. you're ready and waiting, so let's kick it off. Um, like, I like, 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 I'm a huge fan, and I, I love some of the, the fight scenes in there, like particularly the the, uh, the mid-season finale of season four with the prison fight, seeing you going around with the, uh, the Winchester. Was one of what was your favorite personal fight scene you like to do as Carl during the series? Oh man, I didn't get to do a ton of like really cool stunts, you know. I, you know, funny thing, I didn't even have my first like melee zombie kill until the end of season five, which is insane because like I, I didn't even realize. No, I'm sorry, it was like halfway through season five. My bad. Um, it was at the it was at Gabriel's church, and I was when we were like choreographing the scene, and I was like I was holding holding like the knife, and I was like, wait a minute. I've never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, wait, we gotta like rehearse this a little bit because this is my first time doing this. 
Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm trying to remember the coolest one. I, the coolest stunts that, that we did for me was uh, we're, my, we're in my final episode because having like all the explosions, like when you're when you're in a scene and you turn around and a building explodes, that is in it is it is just crazy. So um, yeah, yeah, definitely like the last episode with all the cars exploding, houses exploding, everything blowing up. It's really cool. Thank you. Cheers. All right, we're going to alternate between each side, so we're going to go this side now. Uh, hi, I took a picture with you earlier, but I didn't get a chance to ask you uh, some questions, so I, I guess this is my chance. The first question I have is, um, I want to be an actor when I'm older, so do you have any tips uh, on what to do? Man, good luck. <laughs> it's uh, the, the biggest advice that I could give for anyone that wants to get into acting is to stay persistent, because you know, you'll go for probably years without, you know, callbacks or booking anything. That's that's kind of where I'm at right now. And all it takes is one yes, because, you know, that one yes could be, you know, completely life-changing. That's what it was like with The Walking Dead, you know? I auditioned for, like, a million things before Walking Dead, and while I was on Walking Dead. A lot of, like, you see any, like, uh, uh, young kid in a in a in a show, I probably auditioned for like Spider Man, yeah, Han Solo, like all, like all of these, uh, all those things I auditioned for. So, um, but all it takes is one yes, because yeah, it could be life changing. Um, my second question is, what was your favorite scene to film in uh, The Walking Dead? You know. Um, my favorite scene, it was probably, it was probably the entirety of, uh, and so in season four, the, well, the pudding episode, but not because of the pudding. So that episode was uh, straight out of the comic book, like start to finish, that was, that was just completely like adapted from a, a single issue in the comics. And it was just so cool to be able to bring those scenes, specific scenes from the comic book, onto TV, where they'd be shooting in the same angles as like the, the frames in the comics, and um, and actually that episode had my audition scene in it from before I started on the show. Yeah, the scene where Carl is like yelling at, at Rick and everything. Um, that was uh, it was it's, it was a lot different when we actually did it, but um, but that was my audition scene. Which was really cool. And then my uh, my final question is, who was the nicest overall best cast member to uh, work with in any of the, in any of your projects? There, ev everyone that I've worked with has been so so like incredible and, and uh, supportive and everything. But uh, but the guy who played Rick, Andy, was like just the coolest dude ever. He he showed up to set every day, knowing every word on that script inside and out he even knew my lines like if i if i got like a line wrong he would correct me or like it because uh, we'd be like going over the stage direction trying to you know like rehearse and choreograph these scenes and he'd be like no it's, it says that carl walks over to and he would lay out the specific thing and i'd be like dude what how are you doing that um and it just it made me feel really embarrassed I'm like man i had you, you know my lines, I don't even know God. But anyways, he, he, would, uh, he was just a huge inspiration for not only myself, but everyone else on the set. The, uh, the, the main like character on a cast is the one who sets the tone for how the set is, and he set an, an incredible, like, down-to-earth, humble tone for the cast and the crew. And I think that's played a huge part as uh, as to why you know the, the first few seasons of the show were so incredible. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank thanks, you. man. So before we go to this question, I just want to jump on something that you said there because I had heard the rumor and then I totally forgot to ask you about it. So you auditioned for Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, but like you know, me and like you know a thousand other thousand other people. Um, actually, um, if you guys have seen season nine, the kid who plays Henry, uh, the older version of Henry. Matt Lentz, I'm good friends with him in real life, but it was actually down between like him and Tom Holland and like one other one other dude. So he was way closer than I was <laughs> to being Spider-Man. 
But that must have been a very cool experience to get in, to try. I was a nervous wreck. I completely bombed that audition. I'm gonna be real with you guys. It was, I, I walked out of that and I was like, I just blew the coolest audition of my life. It was a bummer. It's okay, there's, there's another one. There's gonna be lots of other Marvel films coming up, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. All right, now, next question. Um, so, is it true that you have a cheesy bird mess? <laughs> I, there's a lot of people confused here. Uh, this is it's from a, that's from a, uh, the bad lip reading thing. But like the first one. So there's the one with Carl Papa. You guys know that one? Okay, so there's that one. But then the first bad lip reading for The Walking Dead. Yeah, it's a thing. It's something about a cheesy bird mess. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but yes, thank you for that. Yes. No, I don't have a cheesy bird mess. Can you get the, the treat thing? Treat? Treat? I can't roll my arms. That's embarrassing. No. That's the best I can do. Sorry, man. All right, back over this side. Uh, hello, I was just wondering, what's your favorite Walking Dead character other than Crab? Michonne, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Michonne is so sick. Like in the in the comics, Michonne is my favorite character on the show. Michonne is my favorite character, and Denai is just an incredible person to work with inside and out. She's she's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Back this side. Hey. Oh, hello. Uh, so, you were talking about the superhero movies a while ago, but um, if Kirkman also wrote like Invincible, so if um, you ever got, uh, if there was ever like a live action or whatever for the if Invincible, would you be interested in it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've actually, I've been trying to um, get into voice acting a little bit. Actually, I did, um, I uh, played a role on, on an anime that will be coming out in the next like year or so, I think. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I would, I, but like, to answer your question, yeah, I would love to do a live action thing of some sort. It'd be so cool for Invincible. Thank you. Back to set. How you going? I've got uh, two questions, if you'll have me. Uh, the first one is, are you still in contact with everyone's favorite TV dad, Andrew Lincoln, or any of the other cast members? Yeah, I, I get to see them at conventions most of the time, so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not like, we're ever not in, in, in contact. But for Andy, this dude is living in like the 1700s. He doesn't know how to text. Like the entirety of him being on the show, he had a flip phone. Like I'm, I'm being real with you. He had a flip phone. He didn't know. Like I, we did. We have to like text his wife to like be able to coordinate anything with him ever. And like try to email him. Forget it, man. Like, I, I, I sent him an email a couple of years ago. He didn't get back to me for like four weeks. <laughs> like, it was like a happy birthday email. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but other than that, like, yeah, keep, I, I love to keep in contact with, uh, with all the other guys that, that come to these. It's great. Uh, my other question is Would you ever consider doing a worldwide stadium tour where you uh, show up at the venue, perform Kyle Popper, and then go home? <laughs> I can't sing, and that's the thing. And so, you know, I would love to, I, I, I would just have to like lip sync the whole time, and then people would just get mad. So, yeah. If I could. All right, back on this side. Hi, so earlier you mentioned Twilight, so I just want to know, are you team Edward or team Jacob? I haven't <laughs> seen any of the Twilight movies. Okay, but well, just if you, what would you think you'd be? Would you well, be team love, vampire or team werewolf? Well, I love Robert Pattinson in, in, in the new Batman. He killed it. He did so, so good. good. So team Ed Edward? Edward, yeah. Team Edward. Okay, right answer. Thank you. <laughs> Back on this side. Um, who do you think is the best villain in The Walking Dead? It's, I'm so sorry. Say that one more time. Um, who do you think is the best, best villain in The, villain the, best villain in the, <laughs> in the Walking Dead? The governor. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, I feel like so many people go out and like, you know, say that Negan's the best one. Dude, the governor straight up murdered his entire town. Like, 30-something people. Like, he, he is a bad dude. Like, that is just so, yeah, it's, and, it's hardcore. And he cut, cut off Rick's hand in the comics. He did. In the comics, he's so much worse. Yeah, that's the crazy part. They would have toned him down for TV. Yeah. And he still is, a, is insane. I was like, yeah, that's how you know when someone's bad when like the TV version is the toned down version. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Back this side. 
Hi, um, I'm just wondering what is your favorite season out of the entire show? Um, I feel like some of the seasons of, at the at the prison were just so cool, like seasons three and four. Um, because because I was such a huge fan of the comics, we were bringing so we, and that and that was actually some of our, our uh, first like scenes on sound stages. We could replicate the sets to be really similar to how they were in the comics, and it was just. It was so cool, like walking around on that set because they built the prison over, like on top of the so the sound stages that we have that look like big warehouses, and so they turned that in those into prisons. Like they put like fake brick walls on the outside, and they put like you know the metal fences and the watchtowers on the outside of them. Um, so getting to do that was just so cool, and uh, and I feel like. Um, Carl's sort like storylines during like seasons three and four. He grew like if you look from the beginning of season three or the end of season two to like the end of season four, he's like a completely different character. So they gave Carl a lot of awesome growth, and it was just it was an awesome show during that time. Like every episode was sick. It's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great. Right, like this side. Uh, is there anything you would like to see in the show, like that were in the comics? Anything that uh, wasn't in the comics that I would have liked to see in the show? Uh, that was in the comics that weren't in the show yet. Right. Um, I don't know. I feel like they brought a lot of... Uh, they brought most of the stuff from the comics into the show. They more of just kind of like added stuff in on top of it. Um, I don't know. To be honest, I wish I had a good answer. Do you, do you have, is there something that you have in mind specifically? Um, maybe like keep Andrea in it, because she was like going yeah. to the comics, but I didn't like her in the show, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, they didn't make her very likable in the show. <laughs> yeah, no, but Andrea in the comics is an awesome character. She's really, really cool. Yeah, it would have been cool to have Lori Holden in there for a bit longer. She's an amazing, amazing person. If any of you have ever have ever met her, she's incredible. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, back to this side. Okay, so I have um, two questions. My first one is, how how was it like uh, still being in school while also going in like and acting at the same time? It really wasn't that bad. I didn't have to move to be on the show because they had, they cast Carl locally. So I didn't have to go anywhere. I still had all my same friends before I was on the show. And at the same time, I was already doing other projects before then, so it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities for me to have to miss a few days to like go film something. Um, but yeah, it was uh, when I got into high school, because the, the high school was like kind of a pool of a bunch of different like middle schools, I, I did get my fair share of corals yelled at me in the hallways <laughs> and, uh, and people asking for pictures of me or with me. I'm like, please, I don't, I don't, just don't post it anywhere because I don't want people coming to my school. People actually did end up coming like to my school, and uh, they would they would come to my school and like ask the people at the front desk to like for me basically like, can we meet Chandler? And they were like, no, this is a school. Uh, leave. <laughs> like, well, I'm in the middle of class. Like, what? Uh, but yeah, yeah, they would come to my school. That was crazy. Wow, because I, I was going to ask you about like fandoms and things like that because, of course, like The Walking Dead was such a big show. But to hear that they actually showed up at your school, that is crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty nuts. But, um, but you know, most of the most of the kids that I like had classes with and everything were pretty cool. But they didn't really care about it, basically, because at the end of the day, I was still doing all the same work that they were. It wasn't like, if anything, it was tougher because I had I would have to miss it to work, and then I'd have to come back home after working for ten hours and do more in do school or do homework. So it was um, yeah, it was a lot. But you know, it is what it is. Since you were so young when you started, were there any scenes that like scared you to film? No, I mean, uh, kind of like I was saying earlier, you know, it's um, it's our job to make things look scary. So the fact that you're asking that question means I did my job. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I was just wondering, what character would you bring back that um, died? Because, yeah. Mm. What, what character would you bring back that uh, died if you could? <laughs> Except I would love that job again. Um, I think. Uh, let's see. Um, I haven't see. I haven't watched ten, season ten or eleven yet. Um, so I'm just trying to think of. Uh, uh, you know, honestly, I feel like uh, Glenn yeah. to bring back Glenn would be really cool because I, I feel like. In the show, they did a. It would have been like good with just Abraham, you know, and that could have that would have been fine. But um, you know, they had to kill off Glenn too because you know the comics. But to have him have him back in the show, having a having that like lighthearted dynamic would have been uh, would have been really nice. Thank you. Okay, we won't tell Michael you didn't pick him. And and Michael and Abraham and Abraham. Uh, I was just wondering, because you mentioned the other cast members like got to eat their favorite restaurants for their uh, death dinner, so what do you have for yours? Um, well, mine, we just had my death dinner like at my house, and we just got like a, cater, a caterer to come and um, then, you know, and bring food. Actually, I think we had the, the catering for the set actually come and, and bring some food, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't anything, anything super special, you know? Also, uh, because you're so young, like, being on The Walking Dead, do you feel like you ever missed out on, like, childhood events or did, like, make it better? Uh, no, because I, I went to public school, you know. I was, outside of the show, I was a normal kid. I, um, you know, I would pretty much just come home from work and I'd hop on my computer, play video games with my friends, or, um, I was, uh, really into League of Legends for a while, and so me and my, my buddies, we would, They'd uh, grab their, they like we all had like laptops, and so uh, we'd be like, all right, League Friday at my house, and so you know we'd we'd all they'd all come over, and um, we'd drink just like Mountain Dew or something, and just get like cracked out of our minds on sugar and caffeine, and, and uh, yeah, so I, I mean outside of that, I was a I was a pretty normal kid, so I don't feel like I missed out on, on much of anything. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I've got one question. What was your, like, who was your favorite actor to work with in the show? Uh, well, yeah, like I was saying earlier, Andy, the guy who played my dad, he was, he was just, um, just top to bottom, an incredible dude, awesome to work with, and yeah, he was just great. I mean, everyone is, is incredible to work with. Like, they, they, uh, they really put together an amazing cast that is, uh, that knows what they're doing. And yeah, did an awesome job. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Well, I think that's actually all we have time for. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, course, seriously, guys, thank you for all your questions. Really and thank you to Thank you, guys. Good.